everyone welcome back to another video welcome back to another bible study video i'm really excited about the topic in today's video because it's been a topic that i have wanted to do a video on for quite some time now so get excited the topic that we're going to talk about in today's video is to wisely choose your playmates and your playground and this topic is such a big one for me. It's one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn. It kind of sounds funny, like looking back at it now. But the first time I heard it phrased in the words Playmates and Playground was from the Porch Church in Dallas, Texas. And I loved how they worded it. But yeah, this is my spin on that topic. And just keep in mind that the things I talk about in this video is things that I have gone through in my life personally. So I'm just speaking from experience. Okay, so no matter how lonely you feel, it is better to have the wrong for or what? No. <laughs> no matter how lonely you feel, it is better to have no friends than the wrong friends. And I think everybody has been in a point in their life where they've had the wrong friends and not saying that those people are bad, it's just saying you're not equally yoked with them. And that is something that is very important for you to know as a believer in Christ is to have the closest people surrounded to you that also believes in Christ. And you need to be equally yoked with the people that is closest to you. So I'm not saying that if you have friends that are unbelievers, ditch them. No, you can have friends that are unbelievers, but your best friends need to be believers. They need to have the same mindset as you. And the reason for this is, you know, what is in the absence of light? Darkness. So what is in the absence of Christ? The world, sin, the enemy. So when you are surrounding your life, fueling your soul with the things of the world, with darkness, you're not gonna have Christ. So you always need to remember to keep your soul, yourself fed with the Bible, with worship, with church, with, you know, the people you surround yourself with. They need to be speaking life into you and not the things of the world into you. So for me, a few years ago, I had, I was never that person to have a big group of friends. And a few years ago, I was. And again, none of those people are bad. I love them to death and pray for them daily. But I'm just saying that they didn't follow Christ. And it was hard for me to be able to talk about Christ, to be able to live a Christ-like life when the closest people I was with 98% of my time was not also following Christ. I began to cuss, I was perverted, I was absolutely a miserable person to be around, I was selfish. All of these things that I never had done or never was, which I've always been selfish and that's been something we've been working on, but that's besides the point. But these people started influencing me and it was taking a really negative toll in my life and it's just one of those things that it was better for me to cut those people out of my life than to keep them in my life and again they're not bad people it's just what had to happen and then there's a couple verses that i want to read to you and i just have them wrote down in my handy dandy journal as always uh first thessalonians 5 11 wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even at all as also ye do and when you look up the definition of edify is to instruct someone in the way that enlightens or uplifts them so as christians you need someone to uplift you in christ in the word in god's word so for me whenever i was going through a trial or something really hard that was going on in my life whether it be at home or with a relationship with someone or you know whatever it was and i was asking for advice from these best friends that i had made you know, they were telling me to do this, this, and this, but none of that was you need to pray about it and you need to go to God about it. And that's what I needed to hear then was someone to tell me, hey, you're wrong. You need to do this. Like, pray about it. Go to God about it. I will pray with you. That's what us as Christians need to have when we're going through those dark times. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift his fellow, will lift his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. And then Proverbs uh, sixteen twenty eight, a froward man soweth strife, and whisper separeth grief. Can I talk? And whisper separeth grief, chief friends. And then um. And what those two verses is saying is, you know, when you have someone with you, that person will lift you up and you will lift them up. And then um, 
you know, Proverbs 27, 17 says iron sharpeneth iron. So two Christians are like iron and they will sharpen each other. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of friction there because, you know, you got to call each other out on your sins. You know, I want to have somebody who's telling me truth. And um, yeah, so I, when the iron sharpens iron, you make each other better. You make it, what? You make each other stronger. But let's say you're the iron and the, and someone else is the copper. You're not going to sharpen each other. You're just going to tear each other up. And that's kind of like what was going on in my life was, you know, I was trying to live for Christ and everyone around me was not. And it caused problems. And this video has been a topic that I've wanted to talk about for so long, but I never knew when the right time to talk about it was until, you know, I found out my best friend's birthday is today, the day that I upload this. So Gabby, I want to say a big happy birthday to you. And, you know, thank you for putting up with me. But something that I have learned from having a God sent, a God given best friend is just how much she makes me a better person. And that is something that I wanted to talk about with about because that's something I've never had before. I've never had a best friend. Yes, I've had some really good friends in different seasons of my life. Some people I still talk to today. But you know, when I was in public school, um, the best way that I can describe my friend situation all throughout my life was if you have three people and you're walking in a path that only two can fit through, I was the person who was in the back and the two people was in front of me. The two people never made me feel included. I never had someone I could trust to talk to. I never had, you know, that person who would lift me up. I never had, you know, my person. And um, in 2020, when I got sick, uh, God had taken everyone out of my life. So all of my friendships slowly come out of my life. A relationship I had, he was taken out of my life. My jobs that I love was taken out of my life, both of them. And you know, beginning of 2020, when everything was finally out, I was so lost. You know, I didn't even have my health. But throughout the next six months, God had taught me how to rely on him. And I think that is way more important is you know sometimes you have to go through that season of being alone in order to truly have that relationship with Christ not only to get to know him but get to know yourself get to know what you need out of a friendship and pray over that friendship and that was one of those things that was laid on my heart to pray over was my best friend and which is funny because then six months later in I think it was July um my mom had talked to a girl she grew up with who has pots and uh, we set a meet date, which I was surprised by the whole thing, and it was awesome. But yeah, I didn't know we was meeting them. We show up. She had her two daughters with her, and then uh, Gabby and I just like clicked right away. And I'm really thankful for that. And the things that I have learned from having a friendship with her is that it's okay to be myself. You need that person that you can confess your sins to, that you can be around the good, the bad, and the ugly. You need that person who sees every aspect of you, who knows every bit of you. Um, and a Bible verse of that is Galatians 6, 2 and James 5, 16. You need to be able to confess your sins to the uh, people around you. Um, and because of that, because of her, Christ taught me that it is okay to trust others. And because I've always had that wall up around my life of not being able to fully be myself and always having to basically change in order to fit in. And with Gabby, I don't have to do that, which I'm very thankful for. And then something else that I really appreciate is someone who calls me out of my crap. Um, like I said, I can be very selfish. I have a bad temper, you know, all of these things. And I really appreciate having people in my life to call me out on those things. So like if I have a problem at home and I need to just, you know, talk to somebody, she can be like, okay, you're wrong on that or you're, you know, whatever. And just, you know, call me out on my crap. And then Matthew eighteen twenty. what does Matthew eighteen twenty say? For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And so that's saying that when two or more are gathered in Jesus, when we are, you know, talking about Jesus, worshiping Jesus, the spirit is there. And you have to remember that a church building is not church we are the church and you can have church anywhere 
and that is something that's very important uh, with the people around you to have is uh, you know your community you're able to literally just have church if you're on the phone but anyway thank you guys so much for watching I hope this message come across the way that I wanted it to come across and actually made sense I don't know if it did or not but we'll see but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and again happy birthday Gabby and I will see you guys in my next video